David Stork has written several papers about this painting. I'm only going to talk about the data in the painting. There are many other implications that I'll just skip over for the purposes of this brief video. In this paper by Stork, he says that the candle is the sole source of illumination of the painting, as he has demonstrated with those five bright yellow lines. You can see that he's identified positions of shadows on the floor with the object that created the shadow, and he extrapolates that backwards, and they all come to high precision to a single light source that's located behind the boy's hand. However, if we look a little closer, we see that all of these data points are not correct, that David Stork has made errors. If we magnify a certain region of the painting, in the upper right, extracted directly from Dork's paper, the detail of the figure near the shadow of the boy's knee. However, if the shadow is indeed the location of a real data point, there has to be a kink in the shadow at precisely the point where Dork has placed one of his data points that corresponds to the kink in the boy's knee. If we look at the left-hand side of the figure, this is the identical image analyzed by David Stork, the JPEG downloaded from a website where Dork obtained his figure. There is no kink in the shadow that's identifiable in that figure that Stork used. If we look further in any other place, and including the actual painting itself in the Louvre, there is no kink in the shadow. So David Stork has made an error in data point, and his error is placing this data point in precisely the location it has to be, consistent with his conclusion, which I'll show you is incorrect. If we look at the block in the lower center part of the painting, we'll magnify it. Again, on the left-hand side is the raw image that David Stork analyzed. On the right is extracted directly from his figure. The first thing that we notice, on the left, we see two shadows coming from a single place on the block. The only way there can be two shadows from a single place is there have to be two light sources. So Stork clearly, in his figure, didn't notice this. Had he noticed this, had he drawn lines to these shadows, he would have seen that this alone shows that his entire paper is incorrect. Because his paper binds with his data to high accuracy, there is only one light source. We can see there are two. David Stork made additional errors, though. Another one he's made is if we look to where the shadow is on the painting, Stork has drawn his data point for that shadow in the back of the block in the wrong location. Since he's extrapolating a long distance, this small but obvious error has led him, when we extrapolate backwards, they don't come to a single location, they come to at least two locations. David Stork's mistakes in plotting his data have led him to the wrong conclusion. In his paper, he concludes that these triplets of data point on the shadow data point on the object casting the shadow, extrapolating backwards to the light source, that he's made a mistake in locating these. Once I pointed this out in writing, Stork wrote a second paper, where he calls these, instead of data points, he said that they were just merely estimates. And he published a figure to justify what he had done in the first, but he's made a mistake here also. You can see that this figure in his second paper is set up to mimic the geometry of the painting. where We have kink in the shadow, we extrapolate backward to the object casting the shadow, and it comes to the light source. In this case, we know where the light source is. It's the lamp that's clearly visible behind the lampshade. In the painting, we don't know where the light source is. We're trying to, to identify the light source. So here, if we extrapolate from the known position of the light source, through the known position of the object casting the shadow, we come to a shadow which is just slightly outside the photograph that Stark has made. And by comparing this figure with his previous one of the George Yellow Tour painting, we can see he's made his mistake of believing that he's only made a slight error in locating the data point. However, he's made more than a slight error, he's made a fundamental error. Because if we don't know where the light source is, if we cover it up, the shadow could extend much further and I've just drawn one of a semi-infinite number of locations where the shadow could be, since we don't know where it is, it's outside the figure, it could be where I've shown it here, the light source could be in this new location, the shadow could be on the wall of the room, in which case the light source could be where I've drawn it here. The light source could be in any of the positions in this semi-infinite red plane that I've drawn. 
Now, David Stork's mistake in the second paper, after me pointing out his mistake in the first paper, was not realizing that if you're going to locate a third position, the light source, requires you knowing two points to define a line. And in the case of the Georges de la Tour painting, the knee of the shadow, not knowing where that is, only knowing where the knee is of the boy, the kink in the shadow could be outside the painting in any number of locations. Only if you know where the light source is can you do the analysis that David Stork has incorrectly done here. So this paper, for a number of reasons, only a few of which I've discussed here, is completely wrong and he has led himself in two quite different papers to the wrong conclusion that there is a single light source in this painting.